Sometimes I feel like I'm going crazy. I find a game, I get really into it, I turn around, and no one else is on this journey with me. So today I'm bringing you a bona fide hidden gem, Below the Stone. As you've come to expect from this channel, we'll look at the game as a whole, and then we'll discuss how it plays on the Steam Deck itself. Below the Stone bills itself as an action rogue light, and I went into it expecting something like a 2D Deep Rock Galactic, but what I found was something closer to an extraction shooter. I'm thinking Tarkov, but with dwarves. At first you're setting off into the mines to scavenge for resources, and not really risking much. But after a few runs of gathering ore and looting chests, returning to base and doing some crafting, now you're putting more on the line and hoping for a potential payday deep within the mines. Or die and lose it all. This creates a simmering tension. What will you find as you delve deeper? How should I approach these enemies in front of me? Do I play cautious or run in guns blazing? Do dwarves really spring out of holes in the ground? Which is of course ridiculous. Other than losing a promising run, games like Hades or ones that we've covered before like Death Must Die or Shogun Showdown don't have the potential to punish the player long term. But play too foolishly, too often and below the stone, and you can soon find yourself back to square one. This opens up options for the player. Want a more chill experience? Hop on with some basic gear and have a mining expedition. Want a challenge or to find rare loot? Forget mining and gear up for combat. What you want to run to be is up to you, and I think that's pretty neat. Your experience is in your hands. I would find myself some days popping on and filling my vault with ore and goodies. Other days I would take my best gear and delve as deep as I could. But whichever experience you pick, you'd better be ready for a fight when it comes to extract. That's the only way to secure your loot. If you die, you leave it all behind, just like in real life. The sense of exploration the game captures is palpable. I was always excited to see what would be around the corner and what challenges would lie ahead. When it comes to critiques, I only really have two, both of which may be addressed by the time that you come to play Below the Stone, as I'm reviewing it right now in Early Access. Ironically, seeing as we're talking about dwarves, both centre around depth. Most of my combat encounters involved me dropping back and timing my swings to hit approaching enemies, which requires a bit of timing, finesse, and has its own feel. While this is absolutely serviceable, I felt myself yearning for something a bit deeper here. Overall melee combat can feel a little one note, and can benefit from a little bit of spicing up. Range combat however is a lot of fun, and the blunderbuss is an absolute highlight. No notes here. And then there's the depth of the world. I really enjoyed the concept of defeating a level boss and delving deeper to a new floor. First you're risking gear on the boss, and then there's the further risk of dropping into the unknown. It adds to that simmering tension I mentioned earlier. I look forward to there being more levels than the two available currently, and we know at least a third is on the developer's roadmap. I want to delve deep, and too greedily. The dwarves delved too greedily and too deep. Let's talk about the Steam Deck and how it handles here. My main issues on the deck centered around text in the game, which is quite a common one for a lot of Steam Deck games coming across from PC. On PC, when you highlight items, it gives you stats on those items and sometimes tells you what they do. Sometimes when I was playing, that box wouldn't show. There are also times when I found the text a little bit tricky to read. Never unreadable, but sometimes I'd have to smush my face up against the deck, and that was making family dinners a little bit more awkward. Beyond that, it plays perfectly on the deck. Controller controls work well and are responsive, and I had no technical issues and generally had a great time. Battery-wise, this isn't an overly demanding game and falls within the 3-4 to four hour range. It suits the deck well, as you'd expect from a top-down, roguish mining exploration game. Below the Stone is a lot of fun and seems to be criminally overlooked. The size of the world being one of my only critiques, I think says a lot about how I feel about the game. I want more. More risks, more challenges, more loot, more fun. I look forward to those new updates. We'll watch closely to see how development goes, and see how the game comes out of the oven when it leaves early access. As it is today, Below the Stone is absolutely worth checking out. But anyway, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for making it this far in the video. Give us a like and a subscribe for more videos like this one, and I'll see you next time.